Before that, I would like to start this webinar with a prayer. I will lead this prayer in a Christian way. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, thank you for all your blessing today so we can start this webinar. Please, please bless our Please bless our speakers, moderators, and all the participants so we can share and gain our knowledge through this seminar. And may all the event from may all the event from this seminar will be a success. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Next, I would like to invite Sir Alan Dharma Saputra as our moderator today. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Vanessa, for your introduction, as well as good morning uh, to those enthusiastic participants on, uh, on this webinar, uh, as well as for those of you who watch this live on YouTube. Welcome to this webinar. Right. So as I'm aware, the participants of this webinar are mostly from high school students as well as some university students who are currently preparing themselves for their future career, right? Wondering what arsenals you need to equip yourself to be a future ready accountant. So look no further because today in this webinar, we have invited not just one or two, but three experienced speakers to share their knowledge and story on how to be a professional accountant, all right? So without further ado, I am going to invite our first speakers for today's webinar. She starts her career with ACCA as an accountant and an auditor. Also, she has worked with various multinational companies, including Big Four and multinational banks. And currently, she is the owner of Got A Thing, working as the career and leadership coach that empowers corporate professionals to enhance their professional skills. Therefore, I would like to invite uh, Ms. May Fing Lim to join us in this webinar. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Hi, selamat pagi, bapa bapa, ibu ibu, saudara saudari sekalian. Hi, everyone. My name is May Ping. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Petra Christian University for the kind invite today and Pa'alan for moderating as well. So let me get to the slides very quickly. All right. So thank you everyone for joining the session today. So a very quick note is that as I go along the session, should you have any questions at all, please feel free to put it in the chat box and when we have Q&A time later, then I will get to it also. All right, so thank you so much for spending your morning with me and very enthusiastic and very motivated to learn how you can become a future-ready accountant. So as introduced by Pa'alan earlier, my name is Nei Ping. Um, I am a qualified accountant, ACCA qualified accountant since year 2008. So yes, that was a long time ago. And since then, I started my career at Ernst & Young as an auditor, later on moved to Visa a global multinational company, and later on with Standard Chartered Bank. So in the next slide, I'll share a little bit more about my professional career. Nowadays, I am a career and leadership coach helping young professionals to grow their careers online and offline. So I also, I'm also an industry mentor with uh, one of the biggest universities in Singapore, which is the Nanyang Technology University that produces 60% of uh, Singapore's accountants every year. So that was a very quick introduction about myself. What is more interesting that I do want to share with you is really the power of being an ACCA Chartered Accountant personally for myself. So in 2008-2009, I graduated, joined an audit firm to increase my skill set and also gain exposure um, working in various industries, providing assurance services. So that gradually opened doors for me to transition into a payments company uh, that is Visa, that I'm sure most of you know. Uh, in fact, nowadays with the rise of fintech, the um, payments world is really becoming uh, more and more for, to the forefront. So I was an internal auditor with Visa where I traveled across um, Asia. I was also in San Francisco for 
of the commons and so forth. So really opening up various opportunities, not just working with the local uh, market, but also at the regional level as well as the, the global level. And later on, um, you may think that, oh, as an accountant, can I really work at a bank? The answer is yes, yes, you can. So gradually, I moved on to Standard Chartered Bank, where I was eventually the senior director and head of governance for the financial institutions, as well as the fintech portfolio. Hold on, I realized that I'm not in the slides. All right, so this should be clearer now. And gradually, I moved, as I mentioned, I moved on to Standard Chartered Bank, where I was spearheading a lot of um, industry initiatives, such as um, coming up with new management reporting, how we can better deal with regulators, and really establishing new governance frameworks for Standard Chartered Bank at the global level where I was based in Singapore. So what I'm also very excited to share with you is really my experience and the skill sets that I have noticed and observed from working with, with stakeholders, teams, and projects in 43 countries. So these skills that I will be sharing with you later on are really things that not just is relevant for you, but very, very relevant if you're ambitious, enthusiastic, you want to grow your career very, very highly. And this is something that is worth developing right now. And I'll share with you a little bit more on how you can start developing those skills that will prepare you for the future. Moving on to the next one. So as Paala mentioned earlier, nowadays, I see my role as creating future leaders because I do mostly work with a lot of young professionals, fresh graduates and students as well through various channels that I'm doing. So that was a very quick introduction of myself. So more important for you, how can I become a future-ready accountant? So there'll be three things that we'll be looking at today. Number one, the five career zones where accountants can add value in the future workplace. Right, so how relevant is accountancy as a career in the 2020s? The second one, the top human skills essential to navigate complexity in the digital era. And the third one, how to utilize the power of your personality to thrive as an accountant in the future. Right, so these are the three things. And as of this point, if you want to grab a piece of paper, a notebook and a pen to Take some quick notes that will be helpful for you later on. Feel free to do so right now. Feel free to do so right now. Okay, moving on very quickly. So as we all know, technology is a major force transforming the future of work and workplaces. So if you think of ourselves personally, how do we use technology and how has that impacted our lives <laughs> now and from five years earlier on? Uh, I can hear a bit of noise, but I appreciate if everyone can mute so that we can have a more conducive um, session. All right, so as I said, if you think about yourself, how has technology shifted and the way you use technology as well, be it mobile apps, right, um, various platforms and softwares. So this is really the same for the future of businesses and the future of workplace. So even traditional business nowadays, they need to really start thinking of like how technology does really impact their business and start adapting also. So as a result of business adapting, what that means is that careers will also continue to evolve as technology blurs the work divide between humans and machines. So most commonly asked question at this point is that, what does it mean for me, right? If I choose to become an accountant, what does it mean for my career? So that's always a very good question. And it's very important that we get some clarity upfront as we move, as you provide a lot of help as we move on in our career later. So after working with people across 43 countries um, over my past 11, 12 years of my corporate career, I've concluded that there is a greater need to focus on human skills to work alongside technology. So in the past, when I was at Standard Chartered Bank, I was running a portfolio that was very innovative. Basically, what we did was to design the framework that they will be rolled out to Standard Chartered Bank globally across a $4 billion portfolio, $4 billion, $4 billion US dollars. So what I've learned is that there is always a place for qualified professionals in the future workplace. Because at the end of the day, what is technology? Technology is just a tool. However, who do you think is using that technology and really leveraging that technology to produce reports, produce results, and produce the outcomes that we want? That is us, 
That is us, the qualified professionals, the qualified accountant, the qualified banker, and so forth. Right? So the key word you want to note here is alongside. How can you work with technology and actually use these tools, use these softwares to, to allow you to deliver more value and not seeing that as a competition. So there is a need to, to adapt so that we can actually learn how to use technology to make our work, um, uh, the quality of our work better. So what's most important for us, right? As the qualified professional who has to drive, you know, go into this digital era is the interpersonal, social and emotional skills which computers don't have. So that's with us and that's how you know, a, a good qualification such as ACC personally has helped me a lot, right? giving me a lot of perspective that I'm able to really identify, really have a lot more strategic thinking and view to see how I can really drive change in organizations. All right, moving on to the next slide. Because ultimately, you know what? Technology cannot replace human judgment. So there will always be need for accountants. There will always be need for specialists and there'll always be need for professionals but how we can then secure and make sure that we have more career success down the road as an accountant okay. is to continue leveling up our human skills so that we'll always progress alongside technology and never overtaken never overtaken i think that's really a very important um, perspective to have because the concern that a lot of people have right now is oh um if if there's a lot of um, artificial intelligence, automation, so what does it mean for my career, right? So hopefully this one provides a little bit of perspective. And that's therefore, this is an opportunity for accountants to continue to add value to the future of work. So keyword here again is add value, because if you're doing something that, you know, the technology can do, then are you really adding value? But there are very various avenues that we can continue to add value as accountants. And I'll also be going through some of the key areas that you can develop your career as an accountant and also navigate across later on. So moving on to the first bit that we talked about. So the future accountant, your career. So what does that actually mean for you? What are the five key career zones that came up? So in the past couple of months, ACCA Global did a survey and they did a bit more research to identify what does the future accountant look like? in the 2020s. So, so that's from 2020, maybe 10 years down the road, right? So looking, so if you're a student, right, it's time to really think far and think far in your career, what you can do and what are the opportunities available. So based on the research, there are basically five career zones that were identified. So five things, assurance advocate, business transformer, data navigator, digital playmaker, and sustainability trailblazer. So I explain a little bit more what that actually means. So the first one, assurance advocate. So I'm sure that a lot of students, once they graduate you know, from their ACCA qualification, becoming an ACCA affiliate, one of their biggest goals and something to feel really proud of is to join Big Four. So coming from um, Ernst & Young, that is something that I continue to feel really proud of. Whether it's Big Four or one of the bigger or regional audit firms, there, there are various opportunities for you to develop skills to help build a sustainable organization. For example, joining an audit team, being in risk or in compliance, all these functions serve to enable the organization to move forward in a, in a more effective way, making sure they recover all the bases. So this is definitely a, a good start. And personally for me, I started as an auditor as well. And that gave me a lot of perspective, a lot of exposure, even within the first how three to four years of my career. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, so any questions, I'll answer it later. So please feel free to put it in the chat box and later Pa Alan will moderate as well. So no worries about that. You'll have time for questions. So as I said, um, for assurance, it's actually a very good area to start with. And I would say that in the three to three years that I, start, I started um, being an auditor, gave me a lot of perspective. And I'm very sure a lot of other professionals may not always have. But I think that's a privilege that, you know, us being accountants do have that privilege of starting out in audit and equipping ourselves with all the skills that we need. So the next one is business transformer. So this is for you guys who are very passionate about change, strategy, always wanting to innovate things. So how can we then as accountants help the business move forward every five years, 10 years and continue to grow by 
having, you know, being a key stakeholder in strategy discussions, proposing innovations and working together with the business. So this is for the guys who may eventually join the big four or other consultancy companies such as McKinsey and so forth, really, really involved in the transformation process. So the third one is data navigator. So what is data navigator? So nowadays, you know, we hear a lot of people saying that as accountants, we need to be business partners. So what does that mean? So that means that as accountants, we cannot look to only do our numbers and then hope that everything will be okay. So how we can continue to add value is really support the business and support decision making through data, analytics, right? So one of the really popular areas for people, to, for accountants to work in is financial planning and analysis because Accountants, you know, when even with the ACCA qualification does provide you with modules where you can then sharpen your analytical skills. And that is something that for business stakeholders, they really value that a lot. So coming from a, a more data-driven analytical perspective to allow for a more holistic decision-making process. The fourth one is the digital playmaker. So in the days of fintech nowadays, where we are very comfortable with uh, new new methods and softwares, these digital playmakers in the company also play a very important role. So they are people who are very passionate about technology, the latest rising trends, and how these technologies and tools and data can be incorporated in the company so that the company can grow faster. So as accountants, there's also a role that we can play within the finance department or the investment department in proposing tools that will allow the business to become more efficient as well as more effective. And lastly, what I call the sustainability trailblazer. So a big part of what I did at Standard Chartered Bank was the sustainability trailblazer, uh, because as you all know, Standard Chartered Bank was fined almost a billion US dollars in lapses in framework. So my key role was to establish frameworks and reporting to make sure that there is an end-to-end -end accountability. So these are areas that may not sound very uh, may not be the first areas you think of for accountants, but definitely what I'm trying to share here is that there is um, areas for you to gradually transition. So even though you may choose to start in one career zone first, there's really no problem to try to transition to the other areas later on um, be, because you have the qualification. So what you need to do is continue to develop the skills to allow yourself more opportunities down the road. All right, so for more details on this report, um, there is a link to the ACC Global website that I'm happy to share with you later on. The next one. So nowadays, what do I do? Really helping future accountants to develop top skills. So what I have here is really a list. This is the first six of the 12 skills. And a very common question I get asked is, how did you, how did you decide on the 12 skills, right? What went on your mind? That's really from 11, 12 years of corporate experience working with people from 43 countries personally for work, for business, I've traveled to more than 25 countries. For myself, I've traveled to 37 countries and more. And based on what I have noticed, observed professionally or personally, it really boils down to taught these 12 top skills that you need to develop. So it gives you a fighting chance and allows you to thrive over and above maybe your peers or other people as well. So the ACCA qualification is a very good baseline for you to start your career, but you need to make sure that continuous professional development is something really critical. So aside from the modules that are provided by ACCA and so forth, there are also things that you can start um, developing right now, even as students right now. So it gives you a better chance in giving a, uh, getting yourself opportunities down the road. So the first six skills that you see here basically comes down to relationship management. So how are you dealing with other people? How are you supporting one another and really communicating in interacting with people? So there's this one quote I like, to, I like to tell a lot of my clients and a lot of our students that I work with. There are really only two things that you need to learn how to resolve. People and problems. Because sometimes problems also come from people. So the ability to work with people, to understand people, and also understand yourself is really, really critical. So what I'm going to do here, I hope that you still have your pen, paper, and notebook with you. So what I'm going to do now, right now is to go through every single skill, but I will only ask you one question. And this question is really important for you to really think about it and then put in some short notes because it will help you identify 
if you actually have some problems and some gaps in this area that you might want to look, on, look, uh, look at after this webinar. Because most people, when you ask them, do you have a skill gap? We, we are unable to see our own uh, skill gap because there is always a blind spot. So this uh, quick session is to help you identify what you need to work on and what you can continuously enhance so that when you are ready to join the workforce as an accountant, you are ready, equipped, and ready to shine. So let's start with the first skill, the art of communication. Most people don't think that they have an issue with communication, but communication easily said is um, expressing yourself in a way the other person can understand. So one, the one question I will ask you here is, when you talk to someone else, do you constantly hear this, this phrase? I don't understand. Can you say that again? That is a really, really important phrase. Because if you tend to hear this a lot when you're talking to people, that means that they don't understand what you're trying to tell them. Meaning the communication is not two-way, hence it is ineffective. So you may find that it does affect your ability to do things and to deliver even in projects and presentations and so forth because you have this little gap. So remember, that was that one question. Second skill, the power of deep listening. Because in nowadays very busy and noisy world, we tend to get bombarded with a lot of things like we don't we tend to talk a lot we want to share a lot but we don't always listen so listen is listening is a very very powerful skill because in a very dynamic workplace the more you listen the more information that you get that will help you do a better job right better delivery or maybe the presentation for your lecturer and so forth so again one question the one question is think about the uh, the latest conversation that you had be it a friend or maybe it's with your lecturer and really think about that conversation and then uh, I want you to ask yourself right now in that conversation was it a 50-50 discussion 50-50 chat or or you were doing most of the talking because if you're doing most of the talking that means that you may have an issue with listening because if you're constantly bombarding someone else with what you say then how much are you really listening? It does also affect the relationship that you have with the person, especially at work. Um, okay, so moving on to the next one, the third one, which is spotlight on emotional intelligence. So what is emotional intelligence? It is the ability to recognize emotions in yourself and emotions in others, right? Most of the time, we are not very aware of these things. But again, the one question to ask you is that how often do you find yourself talking to someone else, again, be it a friend or family or your professor, and they started looking very um, annoyed or frustrated and maybe they will tell you, oh, I'm, I'm not in a good mood right now. Can you please come back later? So that could be a gap in your emotional intelligence because you failed to identify that they were not in the right mood to have a certain conversation with you. This is also very important in the workplace. Um, or even in projects as well, and even when you deal with your lecturers, because when you catch them at the wrong time and you're unable to identify the emotions that's going on, it doesn't help the relationship. And eventually you may be seen as a person that uh, is a bit tactless. So that's not a label that we want to have because as accountants, we are professionals. We are ready to help, ready to add value. So the lower part that you see here, leadership starts with managing yourself, managing your boss's expectation. If you don't have a boss right now, maybe it's a team leader, maybe it's your lecturer, maybe it's your professor. And the last bit is creating win-win relationships. Because at the end of the day, these three things really boil down to one question. Do you deliver what you promise to do? Really think about it, this question. Do you do what you promise to do? Because over the years, you know, I've worked with many, many people, even from managing director or was CEO of businesses. And one thing that they always share with me that they found very frustrating working with the team is um, the team doesn't deliver what was promised. So if you have this attitude or you have this kind of uh, perspective that, ah, it's okay, you know, it's okay, I have more time, I'll deal with it later and so forth. This is the right time to catch yourself and say that no because this is not a good quality that you want to have um, as a reputable professional. Because working with um, very, very senior people, and even myself as a senior director, when I work with more junior team members, these are some things that I expect to be delivered. But when something is not delivered, it does impact um, the way that we run the processes or business. And of course, 
also impacts your performance and reputation, right? So this three one, this three, I would say that only one question cover it all. Whether are you doing? Did you deliver what you promised to deliver? Did you do what you said that you were going to do, right? Okay. So I hope that as of this point, you are still taking notes, just putting in some quick. Um, jottings on what might be helpful to you. Maybe you want to look at it a little bit later on to help your own uh, professional development and getting ready to become a future accountant. The next one. So the next six here are basically skill sets that you need to look at developing in yourself because clear and critical thinking, art of decision making, creativity, adaptation, organization, and time management. These are all very critical skills to allow you to do your job and really perform to the, your best level possible. Because in a dynamic workplace, right, there isn't sometimes a lot of time for, you, for us to go back and forth because it's, it's very disruptive. So by developing critical thinking, right, developing decision-making, really able to come to a conclusion does help your um, colleagues, your team members, or your bosses to better understand how they can help you provide the support that um, you will need in your job as well. So creativity and adaptability, there's really only one question. So are you a person that is very rigid and always saying that, okay, it has to be this way and you don't like any changes? Because if you are this kind of person, it is going to be very challenging for you to adapt in a future workplace because in the digital era and with technology constantly evolving, there will be changes maybe every six months, every nine months, 12 months, and even further on. So you may feel that there is a constant change that is going on that might, be, might feel very uncomfortable to you. So the faster you can identify what are your levels of um, comfort in terms of these skills and how you can develop to make yourself more adaptable, the faster you find yourself um, being able to prepare yourself, right, to become a more effective future accountant. So that's it for the six. Um, if you need more information later on, um, I do have way more details on my website, on my podcast. But as of this point, I just want you guys to really have a think about it initially. If there are any such challenges so that you can actually look to um, improve your learning later on. Okay, so this was the really, really important part. So hopefully you guys have taken some notes that you'll be able to take away after this webinar. So the next part is really bit, the last part, which is the personality bit of future accountants. That's something that I'm really passionate about. Because at the end of the day, how you are wired, it does impact how you behave and may impact your future success, right? So there are basically four kinds of uh, personality that is really worthwhile for you to identify which one you are on or which one you are more towards so that you then it can then help you also to make certain decisions and identify skill set that you may... Um, may find it a bit challenging, right? So first category, extrovert, introvert. So extrovert is a person that is a very energetic and fast talker. So just by knowing this in yourself, guess which skill that you may be lacking is listening skills, right? Listening skills. Because if you're talking, then, then are you listening? <laughs> that's really an important question to ask. So if you're an introvert, meaning you're a person that's a bit more quiet, you need more time to process, really think about things, maybe... Um, communication might be an issue because you may end up doing your own work and you don't communicate to other people to say, hey, you know, this is what I've done and this is how I can add value to you, right? So that's how um, you can use your power of personality to identify the skill sets that you may naturally not be so good at and then identify those so that you can develop first. And you, you may even use such uh, personality tests and so forth to identify which of the five career zones that may be more relevant uh, or more interest for you. So I'll give you an, another example. So intuitive is a person that is very big picture. They like strategy, you know, direction, future, very future-based. And sensor is a person that's more focused on the details. So they are very into making sure that everything is done correctly and precise and so forth. So if we go back to the, um, the career zones, if you're a big picture thinker, maybe you might be more interested in roles uh, that allow you to be a business transformer, thinking about strategy and so forth. However, if you're a more sensor kind of person, you may be more interested to be a data navigator, whereby you are dealing with data, analytics, and details. So this is how you can actually use it to then look into the various career zones that may align better with your natural personality and really able to thrive. 
So moving on to the next part of personality, which is whether you're a thinker or a feeler. So a thinker is a person that's way more logical. So what they may not be good at is um, maybe uh, emotional intelligence because they're so logical that sometimes when someone gets a bit frustrated or stressed out, they may not be able to identify that. So that's the skill area that you may want to enhance. And when if you're a feeler, whereby you're more emotive, you like to share stories and so forth, you may find leadership a bit challenging. So for those of you guys who have opportunities to become a project manager, project leader and so forth, you may find it a bit challenging because you will feel maybe a bit bad telling people, oh, you have to do this and so forth, right? So the last part of personality is judging which is the person that always has an action plan. When you go to him, him or her for a project, they will tell you all the 10 things that needs to be done, when it needs to be done, why it needs to be done, and so forth. So the challenge, if you are an action plan person, maybe it's adaptability. Because in the future workplace, and even as a future accountant, adaptability and creativity, these are two really, really key skills that we need to constantly have in our uh, dalam bentuk pilgan atau lupa ada lima um, puluh soal tujuh puluh lima menit ya yeah. okay uh, so just, just a quick one so I can uh, move on to any potential Q and A later um, so last thing if you're a perceptive meaning that you're a person that goes with the flow and hope that everything will turn out well so just remember that a role as a future accountant we need to make sure that we are very clear and precise on what we how we are going to help our business take so you may find that as a go with the flow kind of character, relationships with your boss and stakeholders might be impacted. So that is it from a personality perspective. I understand we only have five more minutes, so I'll, I'll do a wrap up very quickly, don't worry. Uh, but I do want to emphasize here, just because you are not a certain personality doesn't mean that you cannot explore career in a different area because at the end of the day, skills are something that you can develop. So I may not be naturally a a very uh, detailed person, right? I'm a big picture thinker, but it doesn't mean that I cannot be an auditor. So it's something that if you're very passionate about, pursue that passion, level up the skills that you need so that you can actually able to thrive um, and do well in the area of your choice. Okay, so in conclusion, the future for a future accountant, your role is basically bridging AI and humans. So you being the human side is really, really critical. And you also want to make sure that you are giving yourself the best chance possible. Because at the end of the day, this is now a time of opportunity for accountants to really take the center stage in building sustainable organizations for the future. So like I said, regardless of which five zones you're interested in, they're all there to serve value and really add value for organizations that would be really, really critical in the future workplace. So uh, that is uh, the end of the uh, presentation. But if you guys want a bit more information, you can feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or on my YouTube. There's more details on skills that you might be able to find helpful for your studies or even in your career down the road. So thank you so much for the sharing. Um, um, I'm not sure if you are taking any questions right now. Maybe Pa Alan can let me know quickly. If not, I'll maybe say a quick thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mayfing Lim, for sharing your wonderful story and tips on the necessary human skills that needed for this younger generation to be a professional accountant. Okay, I do take a look at, especially I was very interested when you're talking like, we are supposed to be work alongside the technology, not, not competing with technology, mm -hmm. because now there are a lot of debates saying that mm -hmm. artificial intelligence or machine learning are going to replace mm -hmm. accountant and whatnot, yeah. right? And when you bring up that point, that was very, very interesting for me, yeah. as well as on the top 12 skills mm -hmm. that we need to have to be a professional. That was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just share a very quick note on the point around um, IT, uh, AI and humans, because in the past, in my role as head of governance, I used to work with a lot of um, uh, quants. So they are data, very specialized data analytics people, but I find that they actually found it very difficult to translate that um, data to a way that business can understand. So that's where they may be good in technology. Technology can turn the most beautiful reports, but if we are not the bridge, then then nobody gets the value. The companies don't get the value. So I think as accountants, it's a really good opportunity for us to be that bridge. Yes, you are correct. Normally, I use that word is for us to be the translator in the mm. making process, isn't it? Yes, it's also a good word, yes. <laughs> right. Now, I'm pretty sure there are very enthusiastic participants also want to have some question for Ms. Mei Fing Lim right here. 
But again, hold your questions as we will address the questions later on during the Q&A sessions, all right? And make sure that you guys also participate in the Q&A sessions for the chance to win three exquisite tumbler, all right? Now, we also heard that Ms. Mei Fing Lim talk about on how uh, she started her professional career with ACCA and how ACCA has helped her along her journey, right? Now, I believe some of the participants here are wondering what is ACCA and how ACCA can help them to be a future ready accountant, right? Now, to answer those questions, we also have invited a very special guest today that can share how ACCA, a professional accounting body, can help the participants of these webinars to be a future ready accountant. Therefore, I would like to invite the head of ACCA Indonesia, Ms. Hani Karunia, to present about ACCA. Ms. Hani Karunia, the time is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Ellen. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I hope you can hear me uh, all right. Uh, Pak Alan, can you watch? Uh, Miss Hani. Hello, hi. <laughs> Sorry, the connection today is um, not really good. But uh, actually, before I start my uh, presentation today, I also would like to share um, a little bit of my background, also my personal story. Uh, I'm also uh, an accountant uh, graduate. I actually take my bachelor from Irlanda University. So I've uh, lived in Surabaya for uh, quite years, like five years, I think. Uh, and then I started my first career with uh, KPMG Indonesia until I was a senior associate. And then I uh, went to USA to take my MBA uh, in California and also uh, pursue my master in computer information system uh, in uh, California University. Um, uh, so therefore, I actually can really relate how uh, the technology and an accountant uh, combine forces, but also we need to add uh, a lot of our own judgment uh, so that we can uh, give a value add to the business uh, and look at me i'm also working in education right now so <laughs> although i started as an accountant i can really uh, tell you that um yes uh, being a counter will actually give a, a great uh, foundation for your analytical mind uh, because in anywhere you go uh, you will face uh, data and you also have to make some analysis and make your own judgment um, uh, or business decisions in any kind of a, a sector or a profession. So uh, it is also, uh, I think I'd like to add that uh, there's also a reason why I think my parents want me to pursue the bachelor in Indonesia, because I think uh, they feel like uh, doing business in Indonesia, you need to grasp understanding about the culture and also how uh, Indonesian people, um, you know, uh, see as a value uh, in terms of uh, business relationship. And therefore, you really need to understand more about the culture, etc. If you go abroad and then, you know, uh, I mean, study abroad, um, you can, but I think um, I can really, um, uh, I mean, how to that, that um, that's a, a really a value added also uh, for my skills. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to um, start my presentation today. Um, so yeah, uh, becoming future ready accountant with ACCA. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, I started with, uh, as an accountant and as, as an auditor. Uh, and uh, while I was in the US, uh, and then I uh, went a uh, career in a uh, student recruitment. Uh, you can uh, uh, go to the next slide, please, <laughs> since I think that the control is uh, on your team, uh, Petra. And before uh, this uh, presentation, that I also would like to say thank you to Pak Joshua and the team from Petra University um, for giving us the opportunity to connect with the students today. Um, yeah, I don't see the, the slides moving yet, so I'm not sure if this is actually a problem on my end. Yeah, all right. You can see here, um, 
Yeah, ACCA, it is actually a, a really a global uh, accountant uh, qualification uh, body. Yeah, it has uh, offered 219,000 members in uh, 179 countries. And uh, of course, the numbers keep growing. And also we have 527,000 students. Um, we have a, a lot of numbers of offices across the globe uh, in 52 countries, 110 offices. And uh, we also have over 7,500 approved employers. Uh, and also we have uh, over 300 approved learning providers. And then uh, we have, um, of course, uh, a lot of institutions that uh, work with us uh, currently. Yeah. And uh, as you can see also uh, in your uh, slide here, uh, it says that we also have a strategic partnership. Uh, so maybe for, before I move on to the next slide, I'd like to kind of uh, define or differentiate uh, between what is called member and what is called student. Because sometimes when um, you know students just uh, recently take the ACCA programs and they say, oh, I'm ACCA members, um, not quite right, actually not at all, because uh, students uh, are someone who actually still going in through all the um, ACCA modules and going through uh, all the uh, learning journey with ACCA exams, uh, while members is actually uh, those who are already finished all the ACCA modules, including the strategy professionals and ethical modules, and then plus uh, three years experience. But uh, afraid not, uh, with ACCA uh, global uh, qualifications, um, the the word already or uh, recognize you uh, means that you know it is not uh, a stranger to to see that oh uh, you're from ACCA. I mean you you have your uh, study in ACCA, so it's it's like uh, having a, a global standard. You know if you do uh, actually take the ACCA qualification. As you can see here, uh, we are present in many countries, uh, and even a lot of the employers also uh, become our partners, including like Microsoft, you know, Google, Facebook, you name it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next slide. Okay. Um, maybe you can click the the slide so that the names will appear. I think uh, is that Calvin? Who? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is actually uh, everyone who has the um, ACCA uh, education. As you can see, uh, they are working in various different sectors. So it's not just like a consulting company, like you know, you still do see the KPMG, PwC, but also you see like uh, there is the Air Asia founder and CEO, Sandy Fernandez. And uh, you know someone who uh, Lorena Holloway, who actually worked in the oil and gas, um, and also there's a lot of uh, entrepreneur as well, like Pat Simpson, and um, uh, Indosat. Uh, I'm sure uh, you know there's the Telco. Uh, aside of also there is uh, even the home credit. So it has um, you know a lot of uh, diversity in terms of uh, industries where you can work. Uh, I can tell you also in the past, um, before I joined SCA, uh, I also worked for Accenture, which is more like a technology consulting. Um, but yes, they do actually um, hire a lot of the fresh graduates uh, uh, from uh, accounting major. Uh, and uh, what they do is actually to analyze uh, the system and mapping out the flows of the information systems so that they can um, uh, give this mapping to more like a programmer so they can uh, give a, a business solutions to uh, a lot of companies. So there's another interesting way to look at it also how uh, accountant also playing a, a role in the uh, technology uh, industry. Yeah, we can move to the next slide. Yeah, um, here. ACC also have uh, professional insights. Uh, we have even an application for that. You can see on a Play Store. Um, you can just type in ACC professional insights, and um, yeah, uh, you can download that. 
Um, basically, it is uh, what uh, our brilliant teams from Professional Insights has uh, dedicated their um, brilliant minds uh, in a lot of research that uh, they conduct. Uh, we have like a business, technology, of course, and an economic, uh, from anything digital as right now. Uh, also, ACCA focus in things more digital or digital transformation. That's something that uh, also shows in uh, our uh, SCCA Digital Hub. Um, that, uh, and anyone who may be uh, looking for any materials for their uh, assignments, you know, also maybe a, a thesis, uh, you can definitely uh, uh, look at this uh, as, as uh, one of your resources. Um, you know, to, to build more understanding uh, in, in the uh, certain topics that you like to find. Yeah, uh, next. Okay, and uh, I see also have a great collaboration with Indonesian national bodies. I'm sure you also might heard uh, EIE, Ikatan Akuntan Indonesia, and also EAP or Institute Akuntan Public Indonesia. Um, uh, some, some of the things that uh, I can highlight is uh, our uh, fast track uh, to exit qualification for EIE CA holders. So anyone who actually already have a CA uh, qualifications from EIE, they, uh, they get like nine exemptions uh, from the ACA program and can uh, jump straight uh, away to the uh, SP uh, papers or the strategic professional module. Okay, uh, recently we also have uh, EIP ACCA uh, career fairs and also, you know, we have a joint webinar with the EIP. So uh, pretty much uh, we, we are uh, pretty much uh, establishing ourselves in Indonesia. Okay, uh, can go to the next slide, please. All right, uh, so this is the collaboration with universities in Indonesia. As you can see, we have um, quite uh, many uh, established uh, collaborations with a lot of uh, prominent universities in Indonesia. Of course, uh, since uh, we are in Petra, and Petra is, um, I would say, the only uh, universities uh, that offer um, double uh, title and also uh, diploma in uh, accounting and business uh, and um, add with the uh, RIP, which is like a thesis. Yeah, can you hear my voice? <laughs> I hope I'm not like uh, disappear or something. Yes, yes, we so, can hear you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, add with the uh, RIP, which is like a mini thesis, uh, then uh, one can graduate with uh, a degree, uh, a BSc uh, degree from uh, Oxford Brookes University uh, in applied accounting. So uh, that's uh, quite a you know catch uh, for a lot of um, business to employ uh, the graduates from Petra. Um, no wonder I heard a lot of the, the graduates, um, you know, uh, many found uh, success uh, in their uh, job uh, seeking or employment uh, search. Uh, and also kind of uh, like to mention, although, you know, you had uh, the, the, the study in kind of like, a, you know, satellite university or, uh, you know, uh, like um, distant learning, but uh, in the Oxford Brookes uh, University certificate will not mention any of that. So it's the same uh, like a certificate that when you pursued in UK for the Oxford Brookes uh, bachelor uh, degree for the applied accounting, yeah, BSc. Yeah, we can go to the next slide. Yeah, we have um, uh, numbers of uh, collaboration with employers, as you can see uh, here. Also, some of them uh, are um, already established in Indonesia in terms of the partnership, um, like to mention uh, like the uh, BP, Prudential, and um, some companies even give um, like support in terms of financial support or also maybe you can take a leave when you have uh, uh, exams uh, for the ACCA program. So 
uh, yeah, because of the uh, collaboration with employers, that's also uh, another um, benefit that we um, offer in terms of uh, kind of like stand out uh, from the crowd. Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah, we can go to the next slide. Yeah, um, I'd like to show you, uh, we actually don't have any uh, partnership with Miniso, but if you can see here, um, maybe uh, Kafin can click on the slides. I'd just like to show you uh, in this uh, job ad, uh, it does uh, shows that um, they prefer someone who have uh, HCCA uh, certification, you know, for Wani. I do apologize. It seems that we have a little bit of technical problems. Uh, pa Alan, maybe I'll just continue from uh, Buhani's presentation. Thank you. Okay, Lisa. no worries. Yeah, so as uh, Buhani was saying earlier, even though, you know, a lot of companies are really not affiliated with ACCA, the qualification is still a very highly sought after one. And if you are looking for accounting roles, right, accounting, auditing, and so forth, and when you go to the job um, um, JDs, right, you will tend to see they prefer ACCA qualified, right? So as uh, Buhani wrote, lebih disukai yang telah memiliki sertifikat ACCA. Yeah. yeah. Back? Thank you, May. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. the connection today, I don't know, it's not really cooperating. So apologize for that. Although I already have three uh, Wi-Fi, even uh, modem and also cell phone, but <laughs> it happens. Although I live in Jakarta. Um, okay, uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and if you can uh, click on this slide as well, uh, this is also pointing the um, um, preference on the uh, agency qualifications, as you can see here from the Mandalay Indonesia. Um, this is if you like, uh, you know, chocolate tablet on category, you know, <laughs> this is uh, the, the producer, yeah. And uh, yeah, go uh, ahead to the next slide, please. Yeah, uh, here, even Gojek um, also uh, do prefer the uh, SA qualifications if you see uh, on the bottom, uh, can click on the slide, so it shows, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, Gojek is ac uh, actively uh, search uh, for the candidates in our job portal, uh, pretty much, uh, I think it's coming up in the, in the next slide. Uh, we do have uh, our own uh, job portal uh, that's uh, shows uh, a lot of the uh, vacancies uh, uh, globally, not just in Indonesia. Yeah, we can go, uh, yeah, this one, yeah. Uh, the link is the jobs.sdglobal.com. You can see, uh, yeah, if you were uh, curious, you can, you know, um, search around and maybe you can log in. And even if you already have your CV and you like to, to seek maybe some uh, internship, you know, uh, you can uh, you, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, although I can tell you that a lot of the businesses uh, prefer those who have the ACC qualifications or um, at least a students of ACC area if, if it is something like an internship, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, a way to show you also uh, about the, the opportunities uh, or also the uh, connections that uh, we uh, provide for uh, the job market for our graduates. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and the next slide, please. Yeah, um, much this is also, I think it's already been elaborated very well by amazing uh, earlier, you know, get the skills that set you up for success, you know, she does uh, mention a lot of the emotional portions, you know, I was, uh, um, I think I'm very interested in to see, uh, to, to also to read about the uh, uh, effective listening and also the communication skills. I think um, that's something that uh, a lot of the accountants think that Maybe if you were just like a bookkeeper, you just uh, focus on doing the bookkeeping. But I think uh, like when I was, uh, you know, started my, my role in a uh, auditor, you know, eventually you also have to 
speak with a lot of different uh, stakeholders, right? Um, stakeholders here, of course, it can also be your firms and also your clients, right? Uh, and also your peers. That's something that, uh, you know, essentially that uh, shape you to have the, the skills that you need to for success, yeah. Uh, I think um, that's a, such a such a great start, and uh, for a lot of the fresh graduates uh, to be able to um, uh, mold their um, uh, skill for success. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> Since we only have like 15 minutes. Now, uh, I'd like to also kind of um, elaborate more in this slide. Uh, this is uh, the the modules or also the the programs of ACCA. You can see uh, we have uh, we started with the applied knowledge and there is accounting in business, management accounting, uh, financial accounting. So once you uh, finish that, you will get a, a diploma in accounting in business. And then uh, move to the next ladder, there will be uh, uh, the applied skills. For the applied skills, your study, there is uh, what, six modules, right? So three plus six, there will be nine uh, modules that you need to finish. To, to actually uh, advance yourself in advanced diploma in accounting in business. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, and uh, like I was saying earlier, for the Petra graduates, uh, you can also uh, get the um, Oxford Brookes University and, and Bachelor of Science in Applied Accounting. Uh, to do that, once after you uh, finish the applied skills or the advanced step diploma, you will take like a mini thesis. Um, it's called the RAP. Now, uh, the RAP is uh, probably like around three months. Uh, uh, you can, you can, uh, you should be able to finish that uh, as it is a, a mini thesis. So it's, uh, I would say it's, it is uh, less uh, complicated than the, usually the, the, the bachelor thesis uh, that uh, we, um, well, at least my experience. But then again, uh, it does uh, give you a lot of the overview also from all the models that you have taken in ACCA. It is a very big in exam. You can see there is a three plus six, so those are uh, nine models to be able to uh, send in for your uh, advanced diploma, yeah? And then uh, moving to the next uh, step or next step, uh, next stage in the ladder is the strategic professional. Uh, yes, uh, you can see, um, no, it's still that, <laughs> it's still in that uh, slide, please. Maybe you can. Uh, back into the previous slide, uh, Calvin. Uh, no, the previous one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, for the strategy professional module. So, uh, uh, this is I'm also sorry, very uh, Yeah. So uh, it's actually a uh, total. There will be a four modules in the strategy professional. Yeah. So the essential one, the SPL, call it, or a strategic business leader, and the SBR or strategic business reporting. Now, uh, then you will choose two options, um, whichever it is that you feel that you'd like to uh, uh, take, uh, but the options are only on those uh, four available, which is the advanced financial management, advanced performance management, advanced taxation, and advanced audit assurance. So totally it's two. Now, um, once, you, once you actually uh, graduate from the uh, strategy professional, so if you can um, total, that will be nine plus four, that, that's a 13 model. Then uh, usually, uh, normally we, we call you as an affiliate. So it's not a member yet, because uh, as you may, might remember that to become a member of the CCA, you also need to add on uh, three years of relevant work experience. But uh, worry not, of course, uh, you already, uh, Market, uh, marketable in terms of you know getting the the job that uh, you like in, in the business. Of course, uh, you will become, <laughs> I would say, sought after if you are a, a member of ACCA and entitled to put the ACCA titles uh, after your name. Yeah, <laughs> so for that, uh, and uh, we also have actually another um, benefit uh, if you think that, oh, I'd like to get my master's degree, so what uh, my SD qualifications can help on that, or is there any, um, like, a pathway, uh, let's say, uh, to get the M MSc or sort of like a foreign, uh, uh, like, a title, uh, which is, this comes from the University of London, 
uh, I'm MSc in Professional Accountancy. Uh, just uh, FYI, I think this program also, uh, if you are familiar with the QS World Ranking, I remember back then when I tried to search uh, the foreign education, you know, usually we, we search on those um, world ranking, right? Global ranking and all that. So usually there's a section of whoever it is top in uh, management, accounting, and then also maybe information system. Now for this, uh, your L actually uh, sit in the top six uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a QS uh, world ranking. So it's uh, pretty high uh, ranking, yeah, yeah. So hopefully, uh, you know, you you are uh, interested to 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 still push yourself and move forward. Uh, and of course, um, you know, uh, there will be some few more uh, modules for you uh, that you need to take. But uh, can tell you that uh, of course uh, the uh, I would say the uh, the weight or the load of the programs or the modules uh, will be uh, lesser if you are uh, already uh, an uh, taking those uh, 50 modules from the FCCA qualification. Compare if you are, for example, uh, just a uh, graduate from uh, any bachelor degree. Uh, so this is uh, uh, something that you would, uh, hopefully that you would consider or your parents would consider for you to take the journey. Uh, after all, of course, then you can start with Hatra, which uh, give you all already the diploma and advanced diploma and accountant in business. And then first after that, you know, of course, when we move forward, then um, yeah, you can uh, even take the, the Oxford Brooks uh, University for the bachelor degree. I mean, how amazing is that? I mean, in my time, um, which I need this, so <laughs> I think I will take that uh, for sure, yeah. Um, uh, oh, and added to that, uh, I like to mention, um, but that I remember this. Actually, now thinking about how technology really shaping our world and uh, the businesses, um, you know, uh, it is a module. Bunny? So apparently there have been another technical issues. I do apologize for that one. All right, so that being said, uh, we're supposed to go oh, into our third session. Oh, yeah, Buhani. Yeah. Okay, so Buhani, the time is uh, uh, up for now. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, thank you very okay. much, uh, yeah. Buhani no Karuna, for sharing about ACCA uh, and how ACCA can help these webinar participants to become a future ready accountants. Yeah. Uh, I would like to also uh, ask the participation from the webinar participants uh, to put the microphone on mute at the moment. If you do have any questions, please, uh, please hold into that one for the moment. Uh, we will have a dedicated Q&A sessions at the end of this, session, uh, this seminar, okay? Uh, now, I believe after hearing the story earlier from Ms. Mayfing Lim, Right, and also about listening to Ms. Hani Karunia on how ACCA can help to prepare you to become a future ready accountant, right? As you are, uh, as I'm aware of that you guys are high school uh, students nowadays, uh, and you are want to prepare yourself uh, for the higher education study in the future. Now, the next question is, what will be your first step that you need to take? to prepare all of those things, right? Now, to answer that questions, we have invited our beloved head of program from International Business Accounting of Petra Christian University to share his view from the higher education point of view on how you as the students can take that very first steps. So I would like to invite Dr. Joshua Tarikan to share his presentation. Dr. Joshua Tarikan, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Palan. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, uh, let me share my screen first. Okay, from here. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning. Uh, 
some of our beloved students here from Petro Christian University, whether are you from uh, IBEC or maybe from a regular accounting program or from other programs, yeah. And also from uh, senior high school students that uh, could be yeah, this uh, seminar, yeah, part of your international business, uh, you know, accounting competitions uh, sessions, yeah. And also uh, we like to uh, welcome also, uh, you know the participants here from outside Petra. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, some of you also the professional accountants. Yeah, feel free. You know uh, to ask a question later on. Yeah, especially on this uh, you know beautiful morning we have uh, a good speaker. Yeah, uh, Bumi and also uh, Buhani. So uh, uh, just a quick sessions. Yeah, uh, from me because I don't have much time here and I would like to. Uh, add more later uh, during maybe a Q&A sessions, yeah? So this is uh, how the higher education's uh, response in, term, in terms of preparing a students to become the future ready accountants. So what I would like to share here, what we already did, yeah? So I need to emphasize, uh, emphasis here or underline uh, we, what we already did, not uh, what Petra or IBEC plan to do in the future. So we, we did this one, uh, you know, uh, since, uh, 2013 and until now, yeah. So all of those uh, things that maybe Buhani or Bumi already uh, presented, yeah. And for the our IBEX uh, students, you can uh, see the big picture. You know uh, how we prepare you for the become or become ready uh, for the future ready accountants, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, IBEX uh, missions, yeah which is uh, create uh, international qualified uh, accountants. You know, uh, why qualified accountants? You know, in, in Indonesia per, uh, per perspective, even though it's, you know, become decreasing and decreasing, yes. But what we have, even until now, uh, when we call someone as accountant, yeah, it doesn't mean, yes, yeah, uh, the one who, hor who already have like a ACCA, CPA, or CA, yeah. So, uh, meaning of qualified accountant should be, you know, someone that has a professional qualifications. It's not only someone who graduate from a university degree, right? But in Indonesia, whenever someone, you know, uh, you know, students then graduate from a university uh, and then get or from the accounting department, so we just call them directly as accountant. And whenever they work in uh, accounting divisions, we call them directly as accountant. Yeah, but in international uh, terminology, that's not really uh, right, actually, because uh, we can call someone as accountant, yeah, whenever they has a qualified accountant, right? So uh, this is very important. So in, in, in IBEC, yeah, we not only, you know, uh, preparing students to have a degree in, uh, in Indonesia, we call it Sarjana Akutansi or Bachelor in Accountancy, yeah, but we preparing the student also to have a qualified uh, accountants or to become a qualified accountant or professional uh, qualifications, right? So uh, if you know you ask me uh, how a Petra response, so how uh, you know international business accounting or IBEC response? Yeah, we did this one since uh, 2013. Yeah, we preparing the students yeah to be ready yeah in the future, right? So when whenever they work in the you know, professional work or professional environment, yeah, they can uh, become uh, ready, yeah. But here, see, it's very interesting, yeah, if you have a time later, yeah, you can take a look at the video from uh, Tony Blair about the future educations, yeah. I'm sure that if your age is quite similar with me or older than me, you understand who is this guy, the former or prime minister, uh, United Kingdom, yeah, okay, uh, and, he has a, a very interesting uh, video with uh, LSBF, the London School and Business and Finance. Yeah, the some of uh, the lecturer also uh, visiting uh, our IBEX students. Yeah, whenever they do the revision uh, kit uh, ACCA, right? So uh, interesting video about the future education. So it is like a, a quite old video, but still relevant if you like to see this video today. So uh, he said that a qualified, it means the professional uh, qualification here, 
Yeah, it means that certification. So when, when we're talking about the qualified accountant, again, yeah, it's not about, you know, uh, just graduate from uh, accounting uh, department or accounting, uh, you know, degree, right? So let's see further, yeah. How is the situation in Indonesia? I guess uh, this data, yeah, will be very relevant to Buhani also, yeah, to Buhani and to ACC or to other, you know, uh, accounting professional bodies. You, we can see uh, or we can understand actually, you know, a big market like in Indonesia. Why? Yeah, because, yeah, in Indonesia, the comparisons yeah, between the number of accountant and population is very, very, you know, uh, see here, uh, small. It makes that, you know, uh, in order to find, yeah, one accountant, yeah, we need to search from 12,100, yeah, 13, yeah, uh, you know, Indonesian first. So then we can find one accountant, right? Which is different with other countries. See here, even Philippines, yeah, in order to find one accountant, yeah, you need, uh, you know, to meet first like 3,995, yeah, uh, see people here. While in Singapore and Malaysia, it's very low, which is good. But in Indonesia, you see the gap is still really far. Yeah, twelve thousand. So, so you can imagine if we, uh, you know, compare with the average in Asian. Yeah, it's it's quite far. Yeah. So this is the perspective that uh, that I told you. Even though you know, uh, of course, year by year is getting better. Yeah. But you know, uh, still far from. Uh, we're not talking about the global condition. We're talking about here about Asians' uh, conditions. Which is, uh, if we compare with Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand, we still go quite far here. So this is, uh, you know, uh, part of your mission as a young generations. You know, uh, whenever you uh, prepare your future as accountant in university degree, or uh, you know, still maybe now sit as a senior high school students, right? So we are here, like uh, Buhani uh, told us, yeah. So. You know how we implement, yeah, the ACCA curriculum in Petra, yeah. Like I, I, I told you, yeah. What I share here is not something that we plan to do, but what I share here, what we already did since 2013. So we are uh, the first university that uh, apply or implement uh, the ACCA embedded curriculums. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we we can uh, we can see here uh, whenever the students, you know. Uh, Pass the past three modules from ACCA. They can uh, get, uh, you know, the degree from ACCA diploma, accountant and business, and plus another six they can get advanced in diploma, yeah, accountant and business, right? And then uh, uh, you do your uh, thesis, your mini thesis, or uh, Oxford Brookes University call it as RAP, and you can get the Bachelor of Science. Yeah, from Oxford Brookes University, which is like what Busani, eh, Buhani, sorry, <laughs> yeah, because I have a colleague also Busani. Yeah, anyway, Buhani said, yeah, okay, uh, there is no a difference in terms of the certificate. It doesn't mean when you uh, when you get yeah the degree yeah using the ACCA journey, there will be you know uh, you know stated there yeah like an online class or ACCA scheme. No, the certificate is same. So whether you uh, pursue the degree from UK to UK directly, or you pursue the degree through ACC and Petra, right? So in uh, Petra, yeah, we had around uh, 50, uh, 53 credits, yeah, out of uh, 144. So in Indonesia, in order to graduate from Bachelor of Degree, uh, yeah, the student need to complete 144 credits. So you see here, the percentage of ACC curriculums in Petra, yeah, is uh, quite uh, big, which is uh, 53, or we can say like around 35%. Yeah. What, so what it means, so, so when the student come to international business accounting, yeah, yeah, while they, you know, uh, pursue their uh, bachelor degree, okay, they, you know, uh, parallelly, yeah, we have uh, the embedded ACCA curriculum also inside that uh, degree or curriculum. So it doesn't mean the student need uh, to do uh, two or, or more effort or two times effort. It doesn't mean the student, uh, you know, do Above. curriculums and, and after that also do ACC curriculum. No. So uh, IBEX students only need to uh, do one effort here. 
Yeah, it doesn't mean to afford. Yeah, okay. So it's the different things. So that's why we call here the you know we call as a embedded uh, curriculum. So this is some of our students. Yeah, who graduate also. Uh, yeah. On last October, I guess, yeah, this is uh, when while I, I attend their, uh, you know, graduation ceremony, yeah, and with uh, Dr. Kate, yeah, from Oxford Brooks University here, when they get also the degree from uh, OBU or Oxford Brooks uh, University, right? So uh, how our profile of alumni here? If you can see from this slide, yeah, most of alum our alumni, yeah, work working in a uh, big four like uh, Buhani told us which is in PWC yeah and uh, KPMG yeah Ernest and Young and also in Philip Morris uh, International yeah and then this is the profile yeah for the place where our students uh, you know do or did their internship yeah most of them is the multinational company right is if you can uh, see here okay uh, so this is uh, you know, one of our alumni, yeah, who graduated like uh, three years ago, I guess, yeah, Natalia Ivana. So uh, she has a chance also to work in Philip Morris right now. And then before that, uh, she has a chance also to did the internship, yeah, in Philip Morris, uh, Jakarta, and Hong Kong also. Yeah. And I quote, yeah, or cite one of the important, yeah, information from here, yeah, in one of the journal, international journal, a competent professional accountant in business in, yeah, is an uh, invaluable asset to the company. So it means, you know, uh, here the professional accountant also assists, yeah, uh, the company with the corporate uh, strategy formulations. So the roles of accountant here is very important, yeah. And, you know, to wrap up my presentation yeah sorry it's quite need to be fast yeah otherwise the committee will uh, angry to me yeah here see i don't want to say that uh, whenever we're talking about qualified accountant is it is qualified only in hard skill learn about you know accounting skill no you know like whenever you like to do the acca modules you know you need to do like uh, you need to deal with the uh, time management of, of course and uh, some of the you know professionals module from ACCA, yeah, they ask you or they try you know to assess your communication skill. Yeah, of course, yeah, whenever you come to Petra, you not learn only yeah, ACC module, which is uh, you know more beneficial to you. Why? Because when when we're talking about the like the soft skill, you know, actually as a university student, you learn a lot. Yeah whether you realize it or not yeah like uh, Bume uh, told us yeah whenever we're talking about like a uh, communication skill right it, actually it's very simple you learn about communication skill you know uh, start from uh, the university uh, students so whenever you come to the like uh, to Petra or as a university students yeah so, you know uh, simple things yeah uh, your your lecturer uh, put something in uh, or send you the email. Okay, some students, yeah, give me a response. Okay, even though that uh, email only about the information, but some student, uh, you know, reply me, thank you, sir, for the information. It's the same things also when I put uh, any information, you know, in uh, our chat group, yeah, in a, a line group or a WhatsApp uh, group, right? Some students, yeah, reply that one. Thank you, no, sir, but, but but uh, some student also ignoring that one. You, know, you see, uh, these things actually, uh, you know, uh, a part of a communication skill. Yeah. The same things also. Yeah. When you send, you know, when you send, yeah, uh, your assignment to your lecturer, some student will give, yeah, will give me a very, you know, a good uh, a message in their body email. So. Good morning, sir. Attached is my assignment. Thank you. But some students, yeah, you know, very worse, yeah. There is no title, only attached with the file and without, you know, uh, any uh, message. So this is, you know, uh, first thing first, you know, that you will learn whenever you're dealing with, you know, pro, you know professional skill or your know, soft skill. So actually, uh, you already start to become a professional 
Yeah. Whenever you uh, come to the university student, like uh, Bume, uh, you know, uh, share or told us, yeah, how you deal with your lecturer? Because uh, whenever you become the, you know, uh, uh, a university student, you don't have a boss yet. But how you, you know, fulfill the deadline and etc. Okay, this is a part of the, you know, professional uh, skill actually. Yeah, the same things also, you know, uh, when some things maybe get wrong, yeah, uh, okay, during your uh, attendance, yeah, at least, yeah, you not come to your, uh, you know, your lecturer, yeah, at the, at the end of the day or on the last minute, yeah. So you sometimes, you know, your students, yeah, come uh, to the their lecturer or the to me as a head of the programs, okay. Uh, whenever they, you know, uh, have an issue or problem regarding, you know. The participants of the final exams because in in Indonesia you can only join the final exams if your attendance is yeah minimum seventy five percent, okay. So some students did not come yeah earlier yeah to uh, the lecturer to ask a permission and etc. So again, this is part of uh, the soft skill or the communication skill, which is actually yeah. To become a professional accountant, you need to be qualified, whether in hard skill or soft skill. Of course, yes, it is. Whenever we're talking about like uh, ACCA, CPA, or CCA, uh, they are more focused on hard skill. But lucky you are, yeah, because when you come to the you know the university, there yeah, are many soft skills that you can uh, learn, yeah, including whenever you like uh, join as a committee here in this event. Okay, last but not least, yeah, what I need to emphasize here, like I told to all of you, yeah, some of you are maybe you know, most of 100 here of the senior high school students, yeah, they join these events because this is part of the international uh, accounting competitions, right? So after this, you, after this, you will have the international accounting uh, competitions, right? So uh, the different or unique things from our international accounting competitions, yeah, for the final stages, which is on Saturday, yeah, we deliver the Harvard Business uh, School case study usually. So again, here, why we uh, why we give this kind of a case study? Yeah, you know, to prepare the accountants. So this is part of the you know accounting curriculum. How preparing the student not only learn about the journal, not only about debit and credit, not only about the not learn only about the accounting skill, but we need to learn also about the human skill, professional skill, communication skill, like uh, Bume uh, told us or share with us. Okay, uh, Palan, I guess that's all. Yeah, what I can share with you because uh, we, yeah, it is already 11.37. Thank you uh, for listening. Yeah, I give it back to Palan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Joshua Tarigan, uh, especially to share your view from uh, higher education responses. So as uh, shared by Dr. Joshua, uh, International Business Accounting at Petra in collaboration with ACCA will be able to prepare you the necessary ammunition, the necessary arsenals to become the future ready accountant, right? So the presentations by Dr. Joshua actually will conclude uh, the last presentation for today's webinar. And I would like to open the discussion for Q&A session so for all those uh, webinar participants, if you do have questions for our speakers, you can raise your hand on the Zoom chat, right? There is an option so you can raise your hand so I can navigate the Q&A session. Or if you are rather shy to share your voices, you can type the question in the chat as well. There is a good Tumblr, ex exclusive Tumblr, you know, waiting for you, especially if you like to ask a question directly, yeah? Yes. Feel free, please. All right. Yes. So explore your, uh, you know, your skill, yeah, in terms of a communication, presentation, <coughs> or maybe you know, asking uh, questions. Feel free. Okay. So we've got uh, first responses here from Petran Junior. All right. So thank you, Petran Junior, for your responses. So he stated that. In my side, the only thing that makes human could work together and cooperate with machine these days is just because human have greater ability in understanding emotion rather than machine. So how about in the future, about 20 to 30 years ahead, scientists found out a pattern of our neuron system 
inside our head. They generating emotion and transform it into data, then apply it to the machine. So basically he's saying how if uh, somehow machine will have human emotions as well, right? In that particular time, so how do we survive in the facing challenges with the autom uh, autonomous systems, right? That are superior uh, than us in humankind, right? And who will be the survivor in the era? This just sounds like a family matter kind of scenario. <laughs> Very interesting, right? So yeah, uh, that's a very futuristic question. Maybe I would like uh, Miss Mayfing Lim uh, <laughs> to start uh, addressing that question maybe? Yeah, sure. And I think that's a very fair perspective to share because um, that's what you know AI encouraging us to think a little bit further. But what I would say is this, what can you do in this next 20, 30 years to make sure that you know we continue to advance further? What can you do in the next 20, 30 years? Because it's very easy to look very far ahead. But what about now? Because some people, you know, I work with a lot of people. Sometimes they tend to complain, oh, you know, in the future, this and that is not going to happen. But I said, but what about now? What can you do now? Because if you sit, sit down right now and just look to 20, 30 years and awaiting that the machines will definitely overtake us, then I think life will be quite miserable. So I, I always believe that for young professionals, it's very important to continue to develop yourself personally or professionally, so that we feel like a, a sense of um, ability to, to add value, however big or small that is. Yeah. Right, right. Very interesting point, uh, Ms. Mei Fing Lim. So you are saying that uh, rather than we are wondering about the future on how AI can overtake us, better we take the first step in order for us to be able to add value for ourselves and uh, to the businesses as well. Yeah, exactly. All right, that is very, very interesting point. Maybe Buhani uh, would like to add some points or Dr. Joshua? Yeah, uh, I'm, oh, okay, Pak pa Joshua, okay. Uh, are you saying something, Pak Joshua? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can, you can uh, start, Buhani. Oh, okay, no, I'm just uh, echoing what uh, Ms. Uh, Maybin has stated earlier, it is, uh, it, it is in inevitable in terms of, you know, um, the uh, AI and uh, the technology advancement. That's something that you can already see right now uh, with everything being digital, you know, everything is already transformed in a lot of business uh, to the digital applications. Uh, so if you see that already uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, take control in our life, then you also have to understand that again to to be able to have a control if you're on your of your own life you are the decision right you're the decision maker so then what you can do to actually uh, that you uh, it's not the the technology controls you but you control this technology so for that point of course then you need to um, pretty much equip yourself and then prepare yourself uh, with the necessary skills uh, and also um, the knowledge that you feel like it's appropriate uh, for doing so. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. All right, that's very interesting point. How about Dr. Joshua? Uh, you might yes, want to uh, yes, yeah. Uh, like uh, what we already discussed or Bume discussed before, yeah, during uh, her presentations, you know, machines or IT with the uh, human is not a competitor. Yeah. So human create a machines or artificial intelligence because uh, human yeah uh, need that machines to help their job it is different it is different with a god yeah god uh, create human it, it, it doesn't mean because a god cannot do what human can do right this is very philosophy yeah but the the difference with human human create a uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence because a human cannot uh, do what um, that machine learning can do right so so again, you know, uh, this is uh, something to do with about you know collaborations, because the one who create a uh, artificial intelligence or that machine learning see as, as humans, yeah, uh, and then human cannot do what artificial intelligence can do, like machine learning. And as, as, as the example, in order to do the big data analysis, yeah, we need a uh, machine learning. So human with their limitation, they cannot do that one. They need a machine, but who create that machines is human. Right, so it is need uh, collaborations, but 
you know, uh, thinking about something very far in the future, like maybe, you know, Terminator uh, movie or something else, yeah. I guess it is very, very, uh, or very, uh, really far, yeah. But uh, what we can uh, understand right now, like uh, Bumi or Buhani uh, told us also, yeah, uh, we need to, uh, you know, uh, strengthen, yeah, like our analysis uh, part, our, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, personality part. As an example, you know, as an Indonesians, yeah, many of us, yeah, or many of the students, yeah, very, uh, you know, convenience with uh, descriptive sentence. <coughs> Whenever we like to write some things, yeah, we usually use a very descriptive, you know, uh, as an example, you, you, you write an article or essay, and then what you do, you, you, you draw a table, and then after that, behind that table, you try to dis, uh, use a narrative, yeah, or sentence in order, you know, to tell the content of that table, but not to analyze that table. So the, uh, our weakness as uh, Indonesian most of the time in terms of analysis, yeah. So this is part of you know uh, what we can emphasize or what we can strengthen, yeah. Uh, that's why you know why we need like big data analysis to do yeah more analysis with the you know very comprehensive data, very comprehensive information because we have a limitation of that. But what you can do now as a students, yeah, we can uh, you know uh, learn, yeah. How to uh, you know strengthen some of our uh, weakness sometimes like uh, uh, the analysis and etc. Yeah, why uh, some of the you know uh, a big brand like Accenture center also predict that in the future there is no accountant. It doesn't mean there is no accountant. There is no maybe a bookkeeper. Why bookkeeper? Because bookkeeper job only you know uh, as a descriptive or very uh, technical things. Yeah, they, maybe it will be replaced with the software, of course. But what what we can uh, you know uh, do as accountant in the future, we can put our analysis part, uh, you know, uh, and then uh, you know strengthen our prescriptions. Yeah, prescription. Remember here, the prescription is something you know a skill, something to do with uh, you know uh, how to help the company in terms of decision making. Yeah. So that's uh, I guess my uh, answer. Yeah, hope it's not too long. Thank you. Yes, thank uh, you. I, sorry, um, I have, I have, uh, I like, I like to add a little bit yeah. on, on what you said. Also, uh, also what has been mentioned in the previous slides uh, by Mavic. Uh, one of the things that actually differentiate us is uh, our feelings. You know, our uh, human uh, capability to understand of uh, other people's feelings and emotions. So, in that sense, also don't forget. Uh, not to disconnect ourselves with the society, uh, with the communities, you know, to build a lot of our social skills as well, so that you understand, you know, maybe how to approach the situation, even in a, like a negotiation <coughs> deal, any kind of a business decision, needs to have a sound judgment that's also based on our uh, emotional questions. Yeah, um, yeah that's, that's something that I'd like to add. Okay, right. Thank you very much for the enthusiastic answer as well. And then, um, because we're pressing on time as well, and the committee has already uh, uh, talking to me. All right now, I'll just go into another two questions from the participant. The person who asked the question will be the one who will get the tumbler for today's giveaway. All right, now the second question, I think is particularly uh, 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 given for Miss May Fink here. Uh, so I took an MBTI personality test before and it stated that ENFP is not suitable for a financial advisor. So what do you recommend uh, for this particular case, Miss May Fink? Thank you, Josephine, for the question. And I think this is a very important question for students because I actually just got this question two weeks ago when I did my YouTube live also from another student. What I would say is this, never let a personality test what, tell you what you can or cannot do. A personality test is just an indicator of a preference in your personality. It doesn't mean that you can't do anything else, right? And I think sometimes like as students, we tend to like to take a lot of these tests and then we feel like rigid. Uh, like kind of confined by it. So I'll give you a rare example. And that's a per my personal example. In my MBTI, for those of you who don't know, it's basically the Myers-Briggs personality test. I am an INTJ. So what that means is that I'm an introvert and I'm a very big picture thinker. But having said that, I spent five years in audit being top performer every single year. 
And if you guys are interested in the field of audit, you will know that it is very detailed, very precise and very concise. So how did I manage to still become top performer? It's because I actively worked on the skills that I was not very good at. Because I knew that I wanted to be there and I wanted to work with big four or big eight, big 10, right? So that's why earlier when I shared with you the skills, that's where you need to identify in yourself what you're not so good at and then start working on this so that regardless of, you know, you're an ENFP, INTJ, whatever it is, we all try to meet in the middle so that we can have um, strength on both ends. So this is really critical. And for your specific question on whether you can become an accountant because your personality doesn't match the rigid accountant image, but the, then the question is, what is a rigid accountant image? Because as uh, Pat Joshua said, accountant in the future is not going to be a bookkeeper. Exactly. Right. So there are five key career zones that I shared earlier. So all of which are very dynamic, all of which are, you know, with a combination of skills as well. And just my last point, just to give you some comfort on being an ENFP, my ex-boss at Standard Chartered Bank when I ran the compliance portfolio was also an ENFP as an executive director at Standard Chartered Bank. Wow. What he needed to work on was a bit more structure because he was a bit disorganized. So that was where I was the one to help him with the structure. So we need to make it work, but... Final point, never let a personality test tell you what you can or cannot do and uh, listen to yourself. You can take feedback from other people, but always listen to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mi Fing Lim, uh, for the answers. Now, I have one last uh, questioner, uh, which is uh, Livia Michelle Iskandar, right? You can uh, ask the questions directly if you uh, want to share your voices now. For Livia yeah, Michelle. Um, hello. Yeah. Opportunity. Hi, I would like to ask Ms. Mayfei. Yeah, hi. Hi, speakers. Um, would you have any tips for us to work on our art of communication? Because I tend to have a hard time or organizing my train of thoughts in a short amount of time. I don't think it's a public speaking problem, though. But I often stutter mm. when I get asked spontaneous questions. So would you have any tips on how I could improve on this skill? Yeah, thank sure. You. Sure. Um, I think, uh, thank you so much for the question, Livia. And this is a very common issue if you are an introvert. If you are an introvert. And especially uh, when, because we live in Asia. So normally from a society perspective, we want to be respectful. So sometimes we, you know, we tend to be a bit quiet. So what happens is that we tend to overthink a lot. So for yourself, where you find it a bit difficult, what you can do is just to continue to practice. However, if you're in a presentation and so forth, you may want to just prepare with some quick notes because it's going to be very difficult for, difficult for you to immediately, you know, from being I mean, unable to articulate, suddenly you can then become a public speaker. It's not going to be possible. But what you can do is to start taking some notes first. And maybe you can rehearse a couple of what I call holding statements, which is what I normally recommend for my introvert clients. So when they go to meetings, if you're going for a presentation, always read up, prepare beforehand. Know what's the topic, know what you need to, uh, and have some ideas first, some thoughts, you know, maybe have some thoughts. Um, you can write it down first. And if someone asks you, then you can share what you have practiced first. But always tell them, okay, this is what I think based on, based on what I heard. However, I may have some other thoughts later on. Can I get back to you later? So always give yourself an open door. And as you continue to practice, it does become a bit more general, uh, more um, articulate. You're able, it, it actually comes out a lot easier. So now I'm a speaker, but I can tell you three years ago that the first time I did a, uh, a uh, my first public speaking was a training in New York that I was asked to go. Uh, at the last minute, we flew over Christmas to New York and I gave a 10 minute speech and I was shaking. So right now, it's very easy for me to articulate because I've been doing it for a lot and I keep practicing it. And I'm okay if something doesn't go well because I know that the next time I will do better. Okay? Right. So basically, you say practice makes perfect and also prepare uh, an additional open door. So yeah. you, can, uh, you can think about it and then get back uh, yes. later on. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, that will be the end for our Q&A sessions. Again, as the moderator, I would like to uh, thank for all three amazing speakers here today that have joined us, uh, Ms. Mei Fing Lim, uh, Ms. Hani Karunia, and as well as Dr. Joshua Tarigan to share their view regarding uh, these students on how to become a future-ready accountant. 
All right. So to close this, I would like to say thank you as well for all the webinar participants that are very enthusiastic in joining this webinar and also very enthusiastic in asking the questions on this one. Okay, now uh, to end this up, I would like to say uh, good luck and uh, for B. Trent Jr., uh, Josephine Stefani Vidya and Livia Michelle Iskandar for winning the Tumblr. Uh, please give your address uh, to, uh, to the committee as well so they can send it to you. All right, thank you very much. I'll return it back to the Master of Ceremony, Vanessa Sharon. Thank you. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much for all the speakers and moderator. I'm sure that we all learn a lot of things from them and hope it will be beneficial for our studies and profession in the future. And I will and we realized that some of some of the participants haven't done the pretest. So we want to we want to remind you to do the pretest. And then time really flies now and we are approaching the end of this webinar. As we begin it with a prayer, let us end it with a prayer as well. I will lead this, pra this prayer in a Christian way. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, thank you for all your blessing today so we can enjoy this webinar from the beginning until the end. May you keep blessing us as we go out from this room and enable us to apply what we have learned today in our profession and studies in the future. Make us realize that all of our action and plan should be done for your greater glory. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for all the speakers, moderators, and all participants for joining this webinar. And before leaving this room, I would like to remind all of the participants to do the post test. And then I have one more information for all participants of Petro International Business Accounting Competition, or PPAC. You may have some break, and then you can check into the PPAC website at 12.15, as the question will be available at that time. Thank you very much, everyone, for your attention. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone.